to unit five, which is romanticism. Um, so because we're at the end of the term and because uh, we have limited time, we're going to run this unit a little differently. Actually, it's not because we have limited time, but we want to pivot and change the way that you study and give you a chance to bring all the skills and uh, technique and knowledge that you have to bear on this chapter. So um, we're going to do this backwards. Instead of me giving you daily assignments and uh, very specific lectures covering everything that you're going to want to know, instead, you're going to investigate the chapters of the book, uh, use resources that we provide, and uh, prepare yourself for the, the final unit test. And I will drop highlight videos and activities uh, rather than trying to comprehensively go through everything. Now, that being said, uh, let me explain a little bit of the philosophy behind this. Uh, when I was in my master's degree working in composition, I had a very, very good composition teacher. His name was Murray Boren. And about maybe towards the last year of the master's degree, he stopped giving comments and, and uh, lessons in the same way that he did before. And I remember asking him at one point, he says, I'm not getting what I, what I usually get from you. And he said, well, Jewel, uh, at some point, uh, specifically at the end of this year, you're going to go away from here and you won't be writing for teachers and you won't be composing for grades. And so you need to stop worrying about what, what I think or what other people think and make sure that your um, compositional aesthetics and skills are there in place and you're confident writing what you want to write. Uh, and, you know, I was a little disappointed at the time because I wasn't getting the same kind of treatment that I was accustomed to, but he was right in a lot of ways. Uh, he's trying to, he quote, it's I'm trying to wean you off of, of needing somebody else uh, to help you be successful in this. Um, similarly, um, this unit here, we're going to change the way we do this so that you self-actualize and bring to bear um, a lot of the skills um, and manage your own time and such. That being said, um, what's going to happen here? I'll, I'll go through this so you have a good overview. Uh, December 4th, which is the last day of classes officially before finals week, you have your unit five test right there. And um, you have one, two, three, four specific like chapter quizzes, although they're more like amalgams rather than a single chapter. Um, and so you will use these quizzes to go research answers in the book, although they kind of go in order a little bit of the of the chapters. OK, these will inform you as to, uh, you know, get the information out of the textbook that you you need to learn um, so that you can be prepared for the last test. Additionally, um, I have created a document called Unit Test 5 Questions Verbatim. I'll show you what this is. It's literally verbatim the questions on the test. So you can use this as a checklist as well as you go through gathering information. So these are our carbon copies out. So it says like which characters from Schubert's Der Lurkenig are included in the following excerpt. This is a listening question that we'll talk about in just a minute. Similarly, Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique Movement 5 Mind Taps Listening Guide breaks this movement into five sections. What section does this excerpt come from? So we'll discuss those in this video, but those are the two listening questions, two pieces that represent very different kinds of skills. Uh, and then these are the questions that are actually in there. So it says romantic artists, composers were mainly preoccupied with, fill in the rest from the answers. Romantic artists, composers tended to be, or tended to do something or were. So these are uh, from the introductory chapter and uh, giving you sort of a, making sure that you understand uh, the aesthetics and uh, changes in philosophy and art. Um, that happened during the Romantic period compared to the classical. And then, you know, you can see attributes of or characteristics of Romantic music in general. Um, you can go through and find all these answers and populate this as a study guide. Okay. Um, yeah. So then if we go back to here, um, I've given you highlights sort of uh, from each of the chapters. Now, this is not a substitute for reading the chapter. But uh, one of the things that I find difficult when a teacher says, go read the textbook, is that there's so much information in a chapter, even on a given page, that it's hard to know what to prioritize uh, as important. So <clears throat> let's take, for instance, um, chapter 27, which I believe is the program symphony. 
Oh no, it's 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 nationalism, um, uh, or actually absolute music. So it talks about Tchaikovsky in the highlights. Talks about Brahms and Dvorak's use of traditional music forms as opposed to the other composers of the time. Um, changes in form from the classical period into the Romantic era, and then specialization of music professions. Okay, so these are things that are are not a substitute for reading the textbook but will help you focus on that's an important topic. I should learn about that, right? This might be something that, uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that is more than just glancingly, um, familiar necessary. In other words, you, you should be able to talk about what these are and give examples. So those are there. How would I run, uh, myself in this, uh, term or this, this unit, I would start by, um, downloading the test questions and then I would go through these chapters and start looking at the chapters and seeing okay these are the major points investigating a little more about each one of these things and take some notes on that and then I would take uh, a lecture quiz or sorry a lecture chapter quiz romanticism quiz one <coughs> and you can see that you get to do it four times so I would see what sort of questions are in there well, here's all those characteristics of romanticism, right? And here's, you know, who's responsible for romanticism. And I'd go through there and, and see how I was doing in terms of studying. Utilize the textbook, utilize the chapter highlights, and utilize the, the test uh, verbatim questions to help you get this information. But then remember that your unit final test informs itself from all these questions. So you can go through at your own pace. For instance, if you find that... Uh, uh, with the Thanksgiving break or, you know, in this term, if it's in a different term, maybe it won't be that break, but um, you, you want to spend your time uh, getting this all done during the weekend or, you know, the break that's coming up. That's completely up to you. If you want to, you know, say, no, no, I've taken this time for myself and I'm going to do this when we get back or something, that's also up to you. But um, I think the thing you want to make sure that you start right away is the listening for the two pieces. So I'm going to uh, highlight what those are and then I'll let you get started. Again, these are your quizzes that you do. Uh, you go and search the textbook and the chapters for the answers. Uh, the highlights will help you know what's important as you study the chapters and preparing for the test. There's these large, you know, perfect, like exactly the questions that are going to be there so you can prepare for that. Now, what about the pieces? Well, we're only going to be looking and focusing on two pieces for the listening test. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to the other pieces and get an understanding of what they're like and how they sound. Uh, I certainly will drop highlight videos over the next two weeks that will also, um, like, you know, expose us to the music because it's important. Uh, but two songs that we're going to be looking or pieces we're going to be looking at, one's called De Erlkenig or The Earl King, and it's an example of leader or art song that was written during this time. It's a very famous piece. And the other one is the fifth movement from Hector Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. They represent two completely different skill sets in listening that you've been training for and building your hearing skills through the term for. And, and this is sort of the pinnacle of saying, if you can do this, then you can go out and, uh, and study any piece of music and become familiar with its elements. And uh, you've trained your ears to do some good things. Let's start with Symphony Fantastique. So I'm going to go over to MindTap, and I'm in our class right now. Romantic music is now available. Oh, by the way, you'll notice there's no Chapter 26 in any of the materials. That's Romantic Opera, and uh, we've already covered opera in the Baroque and in the Classical. I might make a few comments in a video about it, but we're not going to retread that. And, you know, okay. So anyhow, here we go. Late uh, program and ballet music. So active listening, and here's Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. Now, you will learn about and have to read about and, and get a lecture on the background on this piece of music. Uh, but it's almost 10 minutes long. You see that it goes to 9 minutes and 48 seconds. And it's apportioned into roughly five equal sections. The witch's dance area is a little longer. Um, and they all have different elements and sounds in them. So... Um, I'm not going to play more than just a little bit of this in, in place to place. The beginning starts out kind of creepy and interesting. All right, you get the idea. 
And then later, uh, in the next section, we get um, sort of uh, alternating uh, a, a theme plus sort of sound collages, you know, so what washes of sound going back and forth. So there's your theme. And then as we go over here, very exciting. And then we get, if you remember what the Dies Irae is, it's from, it's the Gregorian chant, Death Chant. It's quoted in here and becomes the basis for this section right here. And this is a very exciting piece of music. It does so many great things. Um, yeah, okay. And then we have the Witch's Dance, which is a fugato, which you know from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is when you have sort of a fake fugue or the fugue-like entrances. Okay, and then a big, you know, ending at the, you know, that finishes up everything. All right. So what we're doing here is we're bringing all your analysis skills, and I'll help you with some of this uh, during the term or during the, the unit, to break this 10-minute piece apart so that in the listening test, if I played you 20 seconds or so from anywhere in the piece, you could say, aha, I hear this, 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 and this. There's this familiar theme. Here's these instruments. Here's what's going on with um, tempo and dynamics and stuff. Or you just plain have it memorized from, from repeated listenings. But you tore this apart and you can say, we're in this section. Okay? So it's like dropping you out in the ocean and saying, oh, you can't see the shore, but figure out which way to swim to land. Right? It's a big, big, big piece. It's not simple like, um, or, or, apportioned symmetrically with hearable themes all the time. So we're going to use every skill that we've developed from the beginning of the term. We started listening for different instruments or different textures or different dynamics or and themes and things like that too. And we're going to break down each one of these sections. You're going to make a, yourself a personal listening guide and practice. Anyhow, that's a big listening test question. And um, you, you can't do this unless you start now and you start listening to it and then do all the activities. So there's the first one, big piece. Can you learn it? Okay. And you can absolutely for sure. You have all the skills. We've done this many times in the class. Students um, come out on the other side, usually with two main comments. One is that they can't believe that they can listen to a 10 minute piece of music and know all the time where they are. And the, and the other one is that they love this piece of music because it's exciting and bold and, and, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a thrilling piece. Okay, so then the other one that we're going to look at is Schubert's Der Erlkönig, which is um, the Elf King. And this is a song in German uh, for piano and one voice. And uh, it tells a story of a father and a boy riding home on a horse in a storm. And the Elf King, or the Earl King, has come to steal the child away, which is what they said in Scandinavia in Germanic countries. The, the elf king was the boogeyman. Come and steal your children. Uh, um, anyhow, so this is um, a story that is sort of narrated and dialogued through with piano accompaniment with one singer singing all the different parts. It's only four minutes long and it's it's monotextured and, uh, you know, monocolored the whole way through in that it's the same piano, right? You know, it's in the same sort of thing, and it's the one singer. So, and it's in German. So, there's not a lot of things that you go. That's easy to distinguish. You can't say, "Oh, this is where the trumpets come in," or you you can't say, "This is where uh, they have the the boy soprano singing the boy part and the 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 girl coming in and singing the elf king parts because she's you know even though it's a male character, it's sort of like otherworldly. And this is where the father is because it's a man's voice. Um, and there's also a narrator part. We have to listen more carefully and say, well, what, what's going on in the accompaniment? What's going on in the vocal inflection? Uh, what's going on in the tonality? So we can tell these characters apart. You can see that it's done for you here, like this as well. But we'll go through that as well. And this represents a different skill. It's micro-listening as opposed to macro-listening that we did on the last one. Your... Um, your test question will ask you, I'll play any of these things where like there's 
I'll play some of this and this, or I'll play some of this and this, or that and that. And you'll have to be able to say, ah, I heard this character and this character, because it'll always be two characters, the narrator, the, the father, the son, and, and the Earl King, right? And uh, you'll have to figure that out. And we'll do training on that as well. But if it were me, because we'll start this on Monday, and I were going to take this weekend, I'd listen to both of these things in some detail. Well, detail, I'd start listening to them, get familiar with them. Uh, maybe I'd start my reading on those because you don't have to go linearly through these chapters. You can jump in and program music and study Berlioz, or you can go straight to The Elf King with Franz Schubert. Uh, but listen to these a few times, get used to that. It's five minutes and 10 minutes. 10 minutes is actually a long time, block that off and, and so on. And you will have assignments where we make listening guides uh, with each other and then you get to keep working on it and you have to listen to these a certain amount of times and there are practice tests you see right here um it'll be the assignment about making the listening guide here's uh, a listening assignment and then practice things that you just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat to confirm that you can do this really really well on the on the unit test all right well there's your overview. We'll dive into actual specific highlight lectures on how to do certain things for the class, but now it's up to you to decide um, your pacing for these things to get them all done before uh, we have next week and then the, the week after, right? Um, use the materials, the highlights, your textbook, um, and to answer these quizzes right here. And then between these quizzes, the topic matter, and the uh, questions for the test, prepare yourself for a big unit test, right? Most importantly, we will bring all our listening and learning skills to bear. In fact, a lot of the things we do for these two in terms of listening won't seem like uh, music skills at all. They'll seem, seem like uh, information learning skills, comparing uh, things that we hear, logicking out that if we hear one thing, what's coming next? Uh, we bring all these forces to bear uh, on these two pieces so uh, because they, they'll take two weeks to learn if you practice really hard. All right, so good luck on that. Start now if you like. Take the weekend if you don't want to, but just be aware that the work will have to be done, and I won't be saying by this time, by this time, by this time for each of these quizzes. Uh, I will you know, drop highlight videos throughout the next two weeks of certain things like how do we practice these songs or maybe a specific thing about a few composers or kinds of pieces of music uh, from these chapters as well. Okay, good luck. I hope people um, are taking advantage of their second time through the Unit 4 test. Uh, it's open for you today and um, yeah, pretty good marks to begin with, but everybody can always just improve a little bit. So definitely try it again. And that's it.